with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. So excited today. I've got writer, director, Brett William Mauser with me. So welcome, Brett. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, this will be uh, this will be a fun uh, conversation. I uh, the one thing I noticed about you when I was prepping for this is that you're very busy. You got a <laughs> lot of irons in the fire. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, this is about two thousand mid mid two thousand two thousand five. I, I I discovered through a, an article that was written about me what the word prolific meant. I hadn't didn't know what it was until then. Uh, and I, I consider that a, that 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 a pretty big big uh, uh, compliment. That's uh, I yeah. just I just can't find the time to stop. I just keep going, and I think that was been my biggest downfall. Is I would jump from one project to the other to the other to the other, and I never took the time once I finished a project to actually promote it and tell people right. about it. I just push you know put it out there and then move on to the next thing. And that's something I'm trying to change now. <laughs> yeah, my my son's a writer. And and he tends to do that with his writing. He jumps around so fast that he, you know, it 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 ends up hurting whatever he was working on because he moves so fast to the to the next thing. Yeah. With that. So he's doing the same thing. He's trying to slow down. But I told him, you know, we try kind of look at that uh from a podcast angle. We try to stay very prolific. I mean, if you've got good ideas. Get them out there because you never know what's going to happen or, or, you know, maybe there'll be, you know, things going on outside of your control that you can't get them made. So I say do it if you can do it. But yeah, probably a good idea to take a little time to promote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, you you definitely hit on a very good point there with the uh, uh, just trying different things because you never know what's going to hit. You know, we've done everything from, from, uh, from, you know, comedy horrors to Westerns to science fiction. Yeah. And when, when you start seeing the numbers, oh, you know, Westerns seem to be doing re really well. Let's try another one. Let's try to do this. And and taking that time to step back and, and look at your analytics and see what people are watching That's helps right. you decide. But if you don't shotgun all those ideas out there, you're not going to know what sticks to the wall. It's kind of tough, though, because they're different skill sets. Yeah. You know, if you're a creator and you're really good at, at getting something made, that's a that's a really important skill set. But if yeah. nobody sees it, then, you know, I, you know, is it worth it? Some would say yes. Like with this podcast, if nobody watched it and it was just us kind of talking, we'd be fine with that because yeah. that's, that was the purpose was just to, to have some father and son time. Yeah. But and, and it's better when people have eyes on it. Yes, exactly. And, and I think, I think you hit on, a, again, hit on a very good point there. And, and something I always tell my film students and, and the, uh, uh, anyone talking about asking me about films is is when you do your first film, make it make it very inexpensive. Do it yes. do it for nothing because it's probably going to be bad. You're not going to know what you're doing. That's right. So do it for the fun of it. Do it to learn. And every project should be a learning experience. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and they should get better. It should be able to you know as you learn, you can build upon those. You know, you're you're making those little building blocks to yeah. to grow. And then at some point, it's all going to come together. Yeah. 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 Well, so so let's start this way, Brett. Tell me a little bit about what got you started in the entertainment business. You know, why did you want to go into that business? Because obviously, not a very easy business to get into. And then it, once you're in, not easy to be successful at. <laughs> yeah. And 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 hard to get off, uh, hard to get, hard to get out <laughs> when you want to get out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an, it's a, it's a drug. It's an addict, you know, it's an addiction, you know, get it. Once you, once you make that film and get your, get your ideas out there and, and see what's in your head actually transform into a video, it's hard not to keep going yes. back to that. Well, uh, but as for me, I was going in, in high school, I was going to be a magician. I was going to be slight. I, I did sleight of hand. I was my, my, uh, I was in a high school talent show appearing in a box and then a disappearing and then appearing <laughs> in the audience. I was a big fan of David Copperfield, so I, I was going to be a magician. And then when it came to time to start putting in college applications, there weren't any 
major there you couldn't major in magic at the university of texas <laughs> so i had to figure out a, something else and i had been making a whole bunch of little short films with my buddies you know uh in, in high yeah. school uh helped me get through high school because i would I, I i didn't do well in the tests so i was able to do these little projects and make macbeth and tale two cities and these little short films and that boosted yeah. my grain so I figured, well, okay, I'll try, I'll try making, I'll, I'll try getting a video and film degree. Uh, so I went and got my associate's degree, and it was, it was done. Magic was just now just a way to, you know, to, 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 you know, socially interact with people. It was a hobby. Meet people at parties. Yeah, exactly. And it did help though in filmmaking because you know film is magic in a ways. You know, you especially right. in like a horror film or science fiction film. How am I going to make it look like this person appears out of nowhere? <laughs> and you can bring that kind of ideology and those kind of lessons from magic yeah. into filmmaking. Uh, so uh, one just sort of led into the other. And, and again, once once you sort of get that first little award, I won an award for uh, my first short, one of my first short films in college called Murphy's Law. It was about the mean, ugly, rabbit, bread, tinks, and medium cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, black of Domino's pizza from heck. Um. So I won that award and people laughed. And when you make people laugh with your movie in a good way or in a bad way, even um, it, 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 it just you, it makes you want more. And, and I was hooked from then on out and uh, uh, just started making shorts and then feature films and just, just hit the ground running and didn't stop. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's terrific. Have you, have you had a chance to put a magician in one of your projects yet? Yes and no. Uh, actually, when I was working at uh, uh, a local TV station, I was in the promotions department and I shot commercials and we did, I actually did a magic card trick to <laughs> promote the news story that was coming up. Um, the, uh, I actually put myself in the movie sometimes, so I would do magic and coin tricks or whatever sometimes to present a point or make a point. Yeah. Um, uh, a script that I have that I'm hopefully going to shoot in the next year is a heist movie. I've always wanted to do a heist movie. Yeah. And one of the characters is a magician who's able to figure out how they're going to steal this, these bars of gold and things like that using magical principles. So yeah, it's well, always I like that. I had to do that. Yeah. And that's the perfect movie to put a, a magic user in would be a heist movie. Yeah, exactly. Because you would think those, those type of mental skills would apply. That yeah, like it exactly. wouldn't surprise you if if you uh, had something to get stolen and then you found out that one of the crew that did it was a magician. You'd be like, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one of the lines I used in my movie was, uh, "Never play poker with a magician." Rule number two: Never tell your poker buddies you're a magician. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, when did uh, Ponderous Productions? come about you know what made you decide okay i've got to the point now i'm going to go ahead and make a production studio well it it, it goes back to high school where the name came from when i was just making a whole bunch of little movies with my buddies uh in 1991 there was a song that came out called this is ponderous and it kind of hit the top 40 and it was just this goofy spoken verse kind of ahead of its time kind of a song and we really grasped onto it. We thought it was funny. There's a line in there about uh, I could I I knew how to I know how to tap dance, but I could only do it while wearing golf shoes. <laughs> and that was just, just just rang to us. So we called it Ponders Productions. But it didn't become an official entity until 1997 when I was in Dallas. And we decided, okay, we're going to try to actually make some money on these movies now. Yeah. So we need to be able to protect ourselves from liability and and things like that because. Uh, we we were we were doing some crazy stuff trying to uh, trying to make our movies possible. I, I know that we, at one point we lit. I lived in Colorado and fireworks were illegal, but they were legal in Wyoming. So we we're like, you know, we're gonna fund our but <laughs> we're gonna fund our budget. We're gonna fund our movie by going to Wyoming, buying a bunch of firecrackers, bring them back to Denver, and then selling them. And that's how we're gonna get our budget back. And we wound up not even make selling any. We just wound up using the fireworks in the movies themselves. So we started realizing, well, we need to protect ourselves legally in case anyone blows a finger off or something. I right. <laughs> had to understand the whole legality of that. So we opened up the, it as an official company. Um, and then uh, when I moved back to Texas in 2000, we reopened it here in, in Texas. Um, and it just went on until 2012 uh, when it, we always kind of looked at Ponderous as a learning experience. We wanted right. to make make money as movies, and we did. We actually had a, a few movies at Blockbuster and such like that. 
and we were doing pretty well with Blockbuster. Then they started circling the drain and that that went away and everything went into streaming. Uh, but we shut down uh, production and I got out of film for a couple of years and I went back to school and got my ma uh, bachelor's and master's in, in communications. And then I reopened up Not So Sane Entertainment in uh, 2015. And that was when we said, okay, we're doing this. We're, we're, we're doing this for real. We're doing this seriously. This we, We've learned what we can. We're, we're going to always continue learning, but we've got to really take this serious now. And this is our our lot in life. This is what we're going to do. <laughs> and our quality jumped up dramatically. We start, you know, all of our films get out there now. And, uh, you know, not they're, they're, they're definitely by no means Hollywood uh, level of, of promotions. And, and just, you know, we don't put millions of dollars in the right. marketing. We don't have that. But we do find uh, a, a good cult little audience, especially movies like our uh, our serial rabbit movie, the, the serial killer wears a bunny rabbit outfit. Uh, we're making another one right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, it it just finds this little cult audience, and and film you know films like Cere the original serial rabbit. I'm getting emails today. Where can I find the original? I can only <laughs> find three and five. Where do I find this? Uh, so that that's fun. And, and and that really means a lot when when somebody out there and, and you know, uh, when the guy who plays the serial rabbit is recognized in an airport in Spain, you know, that that that's what really makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, that that's awesome. So was the when when you changed the name, was the thought there that you wanted to distinguish the, you know, the different uh, companies because, you know, it was like this is what I did when I was younger but now i'm an adult and i'm serious about it you, know, so you want to distinguish them yeah you know what you hit the nail right on the head um it, that's exactly what it was we wanted to distinguish the two um we had made uh i i had i had started my own cinematic universe back in 97 and that came about from i always use the same actors over and over well again. i was going to ask you about that because i was looking i was like it looks like a lot of the same people which i love when yes. when writers and directors Oh Dude. yeah, I, I I liken it to to Mel uh, Mel Mel Brooks. You always see the same yep. actors in his films. Uh, so it, I I was always using the same actors. So I figured, well, why not just make them all the same characters and just built this cinematic universe? And that lasted until 2012, when we called it the Ponders Universe. Uh, but this time, when I opened up Not So Sane, I said, okay, I want to distinguish it. This isn't the Ponders Universe. This is we're we're taking it to another level. Um, and each individual film, we wanted the ability to have each individual film be its own individual film that you didn't have to know and crisscross and all this. Uh, but in the end, we still kind of fell back into that cinematic universe thing where you have, oh, it's all tied together. And some of our current films are tied back to the old Ponders production films. Uh, but we, 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 we took the definite uh, approach that, okay, we want these all still to be standalone. There may be connections, but if somebody's just watching this film for the first time or know nothing about us, that they're, they're that they don't need to know anything about the other films. That it, it you know, anything's just like a little Easter egg, a mention. Of yeah. This or well, something. and and fans love the Easter eggs, so you can yeah. make a film that kind of stands on its own. Anybody could watch it, but then the real fans, they're going to catch all those Easter eggs, and it's just going to make their enjoyment of the movie that much more. Yes. And, and, and that's, that's the way we look at it is, is, is we're making the films for the people who are going to really appreciate that kind of thing, the fans, yeah. because we think that our, our stuff is great for those, that, that cult fandom that, you know, that, that, that just yeah. has the little Easter eggs and the continuity. And you see one character and, you know, just walk, you know, walk across and say one line in the background and you go, Oh, that's that dude from the other, <laughs> guy, the other movie. <laughs> And that's who we really do the movies for. And we want to make, we want it, it, it's a family in many ways because yeah. it, it, you have that, that, that shared language, you have that shared experience, that shared culture, but that's not to say that we don't want to, we want, we don't want to be a little more mainstream as well to kind of invite people in to this family. Right. Uh, so we want to make them both, you know, we want to make them for both, you know, and, 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 you know, sometimes we do a film that's really just for the fans, especially like a serial rabbit movies. But then we have film uh, projects like the night watchman, which have a lot of callbacks to other projects, but is strictly within its own sort of, sort of universe that we really want to concentrate and only focus on those characters and, and, and tell their story so that somebody who's never, you know, never seen a, a Brett Mauser film before 
can watch start watching this and just be pulled in right from day one and not have to go well what's going on what's this or that and any kind of little well, what's going on is meant to be there for that mystery that's right that's right i, I love that you know because cult movies you know especially for those of us that are, are kind of nerdy we love that type of movie because there's something about you know feeling like you know something that someone else doesn't know you yeah, know inside, you're part yeah. of a group that kind of gets it and then yeah. everybody else doesn't get it that's that's fun yeah i'll tell you i, th I think one of the other things is is i you know you, you can do a standalone movie and, and and do it with love but i think there's a there's a there's a special kind of love in those kind of films yeah you know there's a lot of hollywood films or you know just you know any kind of films that you can look at and go oh it's a good movie but they were just trying to make money on that movie. Right. And then you can see a movie, you know, whether it's got a big budget or a very small budget, you can see the love in a film. And I think those kind of films that have that inside audience and that cult following, the people who are making it, you can see the love. And I think that's sort of what, you know, in pop culture today, where there's there's a lot of franchises that we know and love um, that, that, that you kind of look at and go, I don't think the people making this movie are, are fans oh, of yes. that movie. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where, where, where it falls, you know, where it starts falling on its face is you've got to get fans to make these franchises because they're going to honor and respect the characters and the films that came before. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly, uh, exactly right. I'm assuming using the same actors for different projects is probably helpful because those actors, they're, they're used to how you do things. Yes. Yeah, so even if they're sure. playing different roles, they kind of get it, and that yeah. that has to help when you're filming a movie. Oh, absolutely. There's there there's a there's a vocabulary and uh, a culture that we know and are very familiar with. You know, uh, that you know they know that when when they come to a set, they know exactly what that, that oh, there's going to be the chili mac and the pizza rolls. <laughs> you know, and they they get excited and they or you know oh we didn't have chili mac today oh. You know, and that builds the family as well. That's right. Uh, and then especially when people are, play the same character and over and over again, they become that character and they know that character better than I do sometimes. And we're on set. I mean, I, there, there have been times where I'm on set and, and they come up to me and say, Brett, look, there's this scene where, where my character is doing this. I don't think he or she would do this. <laughs> this isn't. And we'll have a communication and they're right. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. They wouldn't do that. Uh, and it also allows them a, a, a lot more camaraderie and, and uh, a collaboration. Um, a, a film, a question that we did recently was uh, uh, one character was going to just kind of get killed at the end, you know, near the end. And the actor came up to me and said, look, we're wasting a great opportunity here. This character has the best arc and we're killing him off. And I said, you know, you're right. And we 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 basically changed the whole ending because an actor was able to come up and and have a very good point that you know we're missing an opportunity here. And I don't think that would have come from, you know, a first time collaboration. You know, you have right. to have that history and that background with the actor, you know, and and, and the director to be able to be oh that open about the characters. Yeah, sometimes. I I love that you're open to that type of uh, feedback because you know that that just uh, helps the actor be bought into the project if they feel like they've got a voice. Even if you decide not to listen to what they what they brought up or what they say, at least they're being heard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that is the way it gets shot down. But I will then counter with an explanation of, oh, well, this is why this is happening. And more often than not, they go, oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. That in this situation, they would probably act like that. Yeah. Yeah, you brought up a really good point because you know I remember, you know I was a blockbuster kid through the '80s and and '90s, and there were movies that blockbuster had you couldn't see anywhere else with that. And then when that went away, it took everybody a while to figure out, you know, how do I get my independent film out there? Yeah, you know, and yeah, and 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 I and I think when with, with streaming as 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 accessible as streaming is to everybody, it did hurt the indie guy a little bit because uh, I worked at Blockbuster, so you know for yeah. for several years, and and those Fridays and Saturday nights, you'd have the the latest Arnold Schwarzenegger movie come out, and everybody would be there on Friday to Saturday night to rent this new Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, but they were all checked out. That's right. So they'd be like, well, what are we going to watch? And they'd wander around the store and they'd see this one one movie on the shelf that had a really cool cover box. 
then they'd pick it up. Oh, I've never heard of this actor, never heard of this director. And it's a movie no one had ever heard of, but it was just one copy on a shelf and the cover box looked interesting. They picked it up, they took it home and they rented it. Yeah. Um, you, you, they, they got exposed to other things. Now, when you want to see that new fabulous movie that just came out, you just click it on your, on your box and it's never it checked out. It's always available. Oh, yeah. It doesn't give you the opportunity to browse around and see what other kind of titles are out. Yeah. There. I never really thought about that. But you don't do, like if, if you're in a store, you walk around, you're going to check different things out. But if you're on your TV with a remote, you, there's only so much scrolling you're going to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you and miss out because you're not going to see that because you're right. I've rented movies based on the cover. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a friend, you know, it's, it's a friend uh, experience as well. I mean, how many times have you been in a blockbuster store and wandered around and, you know, I mean, Serial Rabbit is a prime example. If you're watching, walking down with buddies and you see this serial killer in a, in a, in a pile of skulls wearing a bunny rabbit outfit with a big claw thingy, your buddies are going to be like, like, what is this? Oh my God, this looks ridiculous. What is this? And you would probably rent that movie because you and your buddies would want to go and watch this uh -huh. crazy, stupid, silly movie. But, you know, how, you don't really get that when you're sitting just flicking no, past your, it's your, not the your same. thumbnails. Yeah. Yeah. I would also say that that's true with like, like I love to read, but I have to have the book or the magazine in my hands. I do not like to read on a tablet or on my phone. And that's yeah. kind of dying out. Newspaper is another one. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard to get a, just a regular newspaper anymore. Yeah, exactly. Every, yeah, everything, everything's online. And yeah, no, I, I have my library of books and, and it's important just like DVDs. I mean, there, there, there's a connection to that. I would say to have that physical medium in your yeah. hand. Uh, it, it, it's almost like a, it, you're a collector in many ways. And, and, and that goes yeah. with books as well to have that in your hand and be able to flip and go backwards and forwards and not have to scroll. There's this, there's this connection between you and the paper, I think that yeah. you don't get with that, with that silicon screen. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I think it's part of the reason people don't read as much anymore yeah. because we've changed the technology has changed so much there's so much more that they can do that's more um more live action on their yeah. phone so they don't pick up a book anymore no yeah plus you have <laughs> the, the audiobooks now you just you just listen to it yeah I, I, I mean there's advantages i mean i've, I've oh 100 percent. there's advantages uh but yeah but there is that that, that disconnect um um it, it, it's 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 a it's sad <laughs> you yep. know it's, it is an art form that is you know and and i can i can understand both arguments you know that, that you know i can understand people saying well what you know what's the difference i think it's just a mentality difference i think i you know i i think some people are going to get it and some people won't you know yeah and that, I that's not to say one is wrong or the other that's you know where you know opinions come in <laughs> yeah that's exactly right i always enjoyed you did a uh, movie about uh bass reeves that yeah. uh that that I I always really enjoyed. I thought that was a a pretty good uh, western. I've always enjoyed um, western history with that, and I thought that movie did a good job of you know kind of uh, integrating some of that in there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was that I I uh, we had had we were doing this project called the Innocent Saga. We were shooting ten feature films in one year back in twenty seven. And it was a time travel epic. And I wanted to go back to the 40s and I wanted to go back to the Old West. So we had just like 30 minutes in the Old West. Uh, but being able to do that made us realize, hey, we can do Westerns. We can do Westerns. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not out of reach. So I, every, I, had, I, I loved Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I, you yeah. know, I loved all these Billy the Kid movies and all this. You know, but, you know, so I knew about all these heroes. But, and they all ha already had movies on them. So I kind of wanted to make a movie that nobody had heard of before. And this was back in 2009. Bass Reeves is a pretty, pretty big name nowadays, but, you know, from 07 to 2010, That's not right. a really big name. Um, so, and nobody really had done a movie on him at that time. So I said, let's, let's do this. Um, and uh, uh, I read about, read up on him and just, just tried to be as, as, uh, as authentic and as historically accurate as possible. And of course, throw my little bit of sense of humor in as well. 
uh, and that that's how we we wound up creating Bass Reeves. And um, I just I just slapped the Bass Reeves name on it. I, I I'm that I'm I'm the, the the minimalist. You know, the movie's about Bass Reeves. The name of the movie is Bass Reeves. You know, and then you get it to the distributor, and they want to change the name. Let's call it you know to hell and back, or you know all this. And it's like, but it's Bass Reeves. That's right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, you know, but that was, you know, 15 years ago, coming up on 15 years ago. Uh, it's hard to believe Yeah, that yeah. It, it's the last, uh, it, well, it happens as you get older, as you get older, time moves quicker, quicker, seemingly with yeah. that. But yeah, it feels like I just, uh, rented that to watch <laughs> and it's been, it's been like 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, uh, that, that, that wanting to, to find characters in history that hadn't had their story told yet uh was something that that, that, that stuck with me uh a few years ago we did lady lawman which was about the mm -hmm. first female deputy in the old west and that's done really well we really enjoyed making that and that was another one where we changed course halfway through the movie we were gonna we were gonna do this with the character and then we thought oh man we made too big of a hero in this we can't do that we got to do it this way half you know halfway through the movie um, and, and that was based on a real character, you know, somebody that actually existed that hadn't had their story told before. Now I know Hollywood can come along and make a, make a multi-million dollar budget. That's probably a movie that's going to probably look a lot better than ours, but ours is going to have a heart is going to have heart. It's going to be, you know, more, you know, it's not going to have the bean counters and the, the accountants and the executives over our shoulders saying, we well, got to do this. You got to do this. You right. got to do that to make money. We can just look at the history and go, this is what happened. This is what we're going to say. Yeah. I mean, good writing speaks for itself. Yeah. You know, it's, we've got to the point, especially with Hollywood movies, I think it may be switching back a little bit where it was all about the blockbuster mm -hmm. and the special effects. And so the writing suffered, I think. And maybe now we're shifting, you know, back a, a little bit where the writing's more important because it's, it's cheaper if you've just got good writing, but you don't need all those uh, special effects. Yeah, you can see some, you can see the sparks. Um, um, I, I, I had kind of given up on Star Trek and then Picard season three. Yeah. Came out and I was, I, that was this, this is Trek. This is Trek. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty amazing season. Yeah. I thought that uh, uh, off track a little bit, but I thought that, that Will Wheaton would be making an appearance, but he, yeah. You know, we didn't get as much as I thought we would. Yeah, I think he just made, I think, a quick cameo in season two or something. Yeah, I think. it was yeah. very quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's just about as big of a fan as the series as any, you know, yeah. as any of us. <laughs> yeah, they did it right, though. It was fun seeing yeah. the, the old crew back together. Yeah. Yeah, yes. pretty uh, pretty good. So so the, is the new movie Night Watchman? Yes, it's a series. It's, uh, oh, it's uh, a series. six episodes. Okay. Uh, it's six episodes. You can find it on Amazon and, and Tubi. Uh, it's it's inspired by, I mean, I, I grew up in the old 1980s detective shows. Yeah. I was a big fan of Remington Steel and and uh, Moonlighting and those those kind of I those, used to watch kind of um, uh, McMillan and Wife. And oh, yes. Mark yes. DeHart Columbo. and McCloud and, you know. Columbo. Uh, I was a big fan of Columbo. I still Columbo watched, was yeah, great. I even liked episodes. like Quincy because there, he was always solving mysteries and stuff. Oh yeah, um, but you know, with with, with my sci-fi background, I you know I, I wanted to do something that was set in the future and something mm -hmm. cyberpunk and something Blade Runner ish. Uh, so many 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 years ago in two thousand two two thousand three, we made a feature film version of Night Watchman. It was sort of my very first attempt at making a you know a, a legitimate budgeted movie, and and at that time budget was like twenty k. Um, and we still didn't know what we were doing with special effects, so it didn't yeah. quite work out well. The acting was great. Some of the actors actually went on to be, you know, be in some HBO stuff and 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 be in some other films. Um, but we kind of put it on the shelf. And I said, okay, I love this story, I love this concept, but until we can do it right, we should leave it alone. And then uh, it was just it was a couple you know a couple years ago I started realizing, look, we can do this now, and I think now is the time. And it should be a series because it was originally designed to be a series and it should be that series where you have the, the, the one-off mysteries, but you also have that arc throughout the season. Right. Um, so we were able to get some money together and, and, and put our own, put our own funds into it. And we kind of said, look, we, we're not going to be able to do this big 24 episode run. 
but we could look around and see these streaming series and they were six to 10 episodes. Yeah. They're all smaller uh, seasons yeah. now. Uh, and so we said, hey, let's do six episodes with, with, with an arc that goes through it, but have other little mini mysteries throughout, you know, have an episode. Are they like hour long episodes? Yes. Yeah. They're, okay. they're, they're between 45 and 55 minutes an episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we introduce, you know, the, the main characters and the idea in the first episode. And it's all it's always been this idea of mine to have, you know, set in the future. America has broken up. There's, you know, it's Texas is its own republic. And a lot of the reasons I did that was because I wanted to be able to have this new justice system that, and you couldn't really do it in today's society. Right. You know, it would never fly. So it was like, okay, well, everything has to be messed up in order for this to work. So basically, you, they, you know, there, the, the, there was a lot of war and, you know, population decreases. So there was no real justice system. Right. So they, the, the Texas privatized the justice system. So if you wanted to be a watchman, you could become a private detective who would solve the crime and then deliver the punishment. Um, but that oh. was always too much for one person. So people, these, these detectives would start going crazy and just psychotic because they were judge, jury, and executioner. And it was just too much for one That's person. A lot. To <laughs> so it was, so they, they legislated that there had to be a two man team. Uh, there was the judge and jury, the investigator, the one that would solve the crime and de decide on innocence. And then you had the dicer who was the, the, the punisher. And he was the one, he or she was the one that had to go out and distribute the punishment. And that concept was just something that's years and years old. I and mean, I came up with that in like 95, 97. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And that allowed me to just build around that. And, uh, uh I got a great cast of characters from Daniela who plays the Subway. So who's the detective Yeah, and uh, Wesley Blake, who I'd worked with for many years is sort of the day side dicer. And then uh, Nicole Maddox, who is just amazing in this role as one of the other dicers. And she's, you know, a lot of people are kind of get, drawing comparisons to Harley Quinn in this, oh, but okay. he, he even kind of said, you know, uh, that was kind of the coaching that I gave her. Okay, we don't want to do Harley Quinn. Specifically, we're not doing Harley <laughs> Quinn, but she is psychotic, you know. So, you know, it, it, it it's just a great, fun, character-based series with these great characters that are fun and and it, it it's it's serious and dramatic, but also funny, but not pulling away from the tone of the series. Yeah. Because that was something we would often have to do. Because you know, you're talking to the guys who made serial rabbit, you know, movies who were just ridiculous comedy stuff everywhere, left and right. We're ma now making this more serious uh, film. We would come up with silly ideas. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> and then we would have to stop ourselves and say, "Nope, that's not the tone of this movie." That's gonna throw <laughs> Wrong <out."> movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's a tough lesson to learn as an independent filmmaker because you don't have that executive saying, "Well, you can't do that." That's right. That's right. Um, Wait, is, is, so did you just redo the story from the original movie or is this a, you know, a different story just in the same universe? Same characters, but sort of a reboot. You know, we, we, we saw what didn't work in that, that original feature film yeah. and took it in a different direction and made it a little bit more, a little bit more edgy, uh, a little bit more, uh, 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 not psycho thriller, but a cyber thriller kind of, it, it, yeah. it gets into some, some film, Philip K. Dick, type stuff uh what the what does the mind really see you know what is truth in the mind there's a guy who you know thinks that people have been you know uh, that somebody has killed his wife but has he really or has he been manipulated and it jumps into the technology and where it's headed today uh yeah, so we were able awesome. to get delve into some of those more you know um um um, um uh, uh, contemporary topics and ideas yeah. of where it's going um and we were, you know, of course, the special effects were able to be kicked up a little bit, but there's a lot. I mean, you could watch the two series, you could watch the feature and watch the, the series and definitely see they're the same thing. But the series is so much better. It, it's just, you know, it, it, it's got such a good you know, um, um, arc throughout. Uh, and the characters are just so fun to watch. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. I, mean, I really give credit to the actors because they came in and they really studied the characters. They knew who these characters were. And they lived up to every every bit of them. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Did you know, like, when you made the original movie, you know, were you 
satisfied with it at that time? Or did you know that it really wasn't exactly what you wanted and that at some point you were going to revisit? I knew I was going to revisit it. It, it, it just didn't, we, our, our, our visual effects were not where they needed to be. Um, it just didn't look right. Uh, I was still learning. There were some shots in there that I'm very, very proud of. I, I, that, that, that was my project where I could say I had my first cinematic shots, my first (laughs) real cinematography with the fog and the lighting. And we really under started going, wow, this looks really good. I remember there was even an a shot where I, we, we reviewed the daily and I said, Oh my, this looks like a law and order episode. And we were really proud of ourselves in that way. But there was also a lot of issues with it, a lot of problems. And that came from, from the low budget and how fast we had to shoot that. Um, this time around, we were able to really, that you know, we did, we, we, I, I specifically said, I'm not changing the script. I'm, if somebody can't make it, we'll figure out how to how to reshoot it or or reschedule it. But I'm not changing the script because an actor didn't make it that day, which was something you have to do in an independent film. Yeah. So we stuck to our guns, and 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 of course we were shooting just as the, as COVID was kind of dying out, and when the bug uh, uh, got one of the actors, we had to shut down for a, a little while, uh, or readjust our schedule. Okay, well we'll shoot this instead. We'll shoot that instead. Right. And, and you just had to do that in order to to stick to the script because we knew that if we strayed too much from the script, it would start turning into nonsense like the original. Um, so yeah, so I was able to look back at that film uh, when, when it was complete and there were moments where I was so proud of what we had done, but also I could look at it and go, this wasn't where it needed to be. Yeah. And so I put it on a shelf and said, I have to revisit this. I know this is a great idea. This is a terrific concept. Let's revisit it when we're able to do it right. And a couple of years ago, we said, we're able to do this right. And uh, last year we shot it uh, over a course of three months, um, all six episodes and uh, got it out there. And we we love it to death. We, we, we're, we're so proud of it. Yeah, I think that's that's awesome. I my uh my brother's coming in from out of town this weekend, so that's our plan. Why the why the girls are out doing whatever, <laughs> we're we're gonna be binging uh, uh the uh, Night Watchman. So we're pretty excited about it. So he's coming. We're gonna hang out uh, here at the studio and make it a little uh, guys' night. Great. Well, I I think you'll really enjoy it, and and, and you'll see, uh, and being a fan fan of 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 a pop culture like that, like 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 myself you you'll you'll be able to see and be rem, you know how reminiscent it uh, is of a lot of the things that you loved growing up and and see how this was this is a love letter to those detective shows and those 80s science fiction movies that we that we grew grew up on yeah i'm excited about that i was excited about it anyway but now that you you know said that you were you know influenced by those type of shows cuz that's what i grew up on too yeah. and i shows. love those shows yeah it's where I learned my my ethics from, <laughs> my values, you know? <laughs> you know, the the lessons that Spock and Remington Steel and and uh, oh, what was a uh, uh, Matt Houston, the, the Cowboy Code, and all oh, of these yeah. things, you know, taught me how to how to what honor was, what what loyalty was, and that's friendship. Right. Yeah, that that's awesome. That's all. Awesome. So, is the plan to continue the story at some point? Will we get a season two? Uh, it that is that is the hope. Um, we, we, you know, we we have to see how our numbers are. If there's there's a big enough interest, basically the way we're looking at it is, if we get as much interest in Night Watchmen as we did Lady Lawman, yes, we're definitely doing a season two. Yeah. Um, if you know, if if it just doesn't catch on, then it's kind of one of those things we have to look at as to, well, you know, what can we afford to do? Can we do a, maybe a feature version of it? It's definitely something that I and every member of the cast wants to come back and, and, and tell because there's there's so many places we could take these characters. Uh, seasons two and seasons three are written. They are written. Wow. They are plotted out. We have, you know, we've got them ready to go. It's just a matter of saying, okay, you know, when, you know, when, when the money is there and the, the audience is there, we are going to do this. Um, yeah. and everybody is ready and raring to come back and, and get started on, on season two. Yeah, that's exciting. So at the end of the, the season one, did you, I'm assuming kind of wrapped it up, but left open the yes, possibility exactly. of them coming back? 
Yes, we did. We did wrap it up uh, nice and tight in a bow, but we 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 did kind of give hints as to hey, there's more here. Nothing that's going to be like oh what what what's going to what's what happened next? What happened next? I mean, because there 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 are pilot episodes of of things that I saw in episode in in the '80s that I still to this day that got canceled after the yeah pilot that was kind of that was the that's reason I brought happened. it up. It's yes. painful. Yeah, if you're a fan of something and they leave it on a cliffhanger. Yes. So I I I did that intentionally to be able to give it closure, yeah. but still be able to say, hey, there's a story here. There there are stories there are stories to continue that can happen here. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. It it it's not ra nicely wrapped up, but it could have a season two, and 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 I could see how people would want a season two. Uh, with with a little bit of hints that are peppered throughout that there's more story here to be told. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's so exciting. So if one of the big streamers comes calling, do you move it to them? Yeah, uh, th that that's absolutely what we wanted to. That was kind of the concept of this is we wanted to be able to say and be a standout and and get some numbers up and and because you know some of our other projects have have peaked. You know, have, have have been able to make some streamers, you know, streaming companies take at least take notice and say, well, right. who are these guys? Why are they, you know, where are, <laughs> where are these numbers coming from? And if we can do that same thing, we want to walk, you know, to we want to have that a little bit of that extra monetary support behind us because I think especially when you're looking at the Night Watchmen, it's it 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 for especially for what you know what it was made on, it looks fantastic. It's beautiful. It's really well done. But I think you can also look at it and go, you know, if this had two million dollars behind it, right. holy cow! Um, because that's the thing is, if you look at it and, and and know that this was this was you know not a big you know by by any stretch of the imagination would be would be considered no budget. Yeah. Uh, to be able to look at it and go, wow, could you imagine what this would look like with if a, if a, if a streaming service said, hey, we want we want to see ten or twelve episodes. And we can do it so fast and 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 so inexpensively and with the love, you know, and, and I think that's the other benefit to being a lower independent film, you know, lower budget independent film is you have the fans making that show. We're fans of the Night Watchmen. We, you know, right. the, the actors, you know, the, the producers, we all love the show. So we're fans of it. So if we've got, you know, minimal amount of money, which, you know, which to us would be astronomical, but to like a streaming a service to say, hey, here's two million bucks go do it do what you want that it's a small enough money that we get to do what we want to do rather than have the executives bring that's right. their neck and i think that's where the 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 night watchman could really excel but at the same time with with the with the the democratization of video and streaming platforms that if if we were just you know get a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars land in our lap we're off to the races with seasons two and three um and we're well that has to help it. right uh, the fact that you've already got those seasons plotted out if you yeah. went to a, a streamer and you're like you know hey we got three this seasons already yeah we're ready to go you know and and um and and that 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 i think that 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 that's a, that's a big selling point to them yeah. and yeah they, they, if that would that's the dream that's what we we did this show to do we hopefully to catch some attention and hopefully catch a, catch the eye of a streamer to be able to look and go Wow, look at these numbers. What is this show? You know, who who's pulling in these numbers? And then for them to say, hey, you got a season two? And uh, us jump up and say, we got it. We not only have a season two, we got a season three. Right. <laughs> By the time season's three, maybe we may have four or five. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, that Chris, is this uh, has been this has been terrific. I, I'm a big fan of yours because I I, looking through your catalog, there's several on there that I've seen. I just didn't realize. Oh, thank that, you. That yeah. that was uh, your group uh, doing that. But you can though. The thing I like about your your movies is that you can tell that they're they're not just thrown together to make you know a dollar or two. You know, even though maybe the special effects aren't always there. The story is, and you can tell that the, there's time put into it. Like if you're putting Easter eggs into stuff, <laughs> you know, you're taking time to do yeah. that. And if you were just slapping stuff together just to get it out there, you wouldn't have all that extra stuff. So that's what I noticed with it, which made me, you know, that's what creates a cult following. That's that's yeah. what made me enjoy the stuff. Yeah. 
and and that's that that's that i i do think that this is the the, the, the you know the, this you know our films are prime for that cult following and i think i i think when people and again i'm not one of those people that says you know oh well you know if you like these kind of movies these aren't this isn't gonna be the movie for you i think everybody should check out our films i, I you know yeah. whether you ju you just like the marvel movies or whatever i think you're gonna enjoy some of our stuff but what we the people we do do it for are the fans and the ones that are going to love the Easter eggs and are going to enjoy the story. And that's something we've always wanted to emphasize is the story and, and be able to we, we, we look back at the old 80s and the 60s. I mean, heck, the, 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 the James Bond movies and the cheesy special effects that they had, <laughs> but we can still watch and enjoy them because the that's story right. is there. And that's what we're looking for is the audience like you that can understand and appreciate, okay, they didn't have the money to get the big major special effects, but oh my gosh, the story is so good. You well, know, you got to use so your good. imagination a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love what, uh, what you do and what Thank you've you. done. I, I think it's uh, uh, very commendable that, yeah. that you've, you know, taken this stuff and, he, and you can admit, you know, Hey, we did this. But it wasn't what we wanted, so now we're doing it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, try, try again. You know, yeah. try and try and again. If it if it didn't work that first time, look, take the lessons that you learned, and that's something I always talk to my students about, and and I write about in my book. Is every film needs to be a learning experience. Every time you're making a new project, it's you got to learn something new. I I I come from the school that if you if you don't learn something new every day, you're not living. <laughs> you, you, that you know, you've got to. You, I agree with that. That's the point of life, and and you know, take take those failures and turn them into successes. By you know, if you learn something out of that failure, then it's a success. Yeah. What uh, What's your book? Uh, I have a book called uh, How to Make a Movie with uh, the Book. It's called The Book on How to Make a Movie with No Money. And I specifically did that because I wanted to be able to have the bragging rights to say, yep, I wrote the book on how to make a movie with no money. <laughs> so I can literally have the movie, you know, I can say that I wrote that book. So it's the book, uh, the book on how to make a movie with no money. We tell some of the, the, the goofiest stories that, you know, where we electrocuted an actor, you know, just all the, the mishaps that happen on set. Uh, we talk a lot about that. But as a film professor, I also went into it to teach you how to make a movie with no money. And I do mean no money. You know, if you can't afford a camera, you've got a phone that you can make a movie with. Right. If you can't afford the big the big lights, well, you've got a lamp in your living room that's going to have to suffice. And we try, you know, and I and I specifically cater to that person that's never made a movie before Love and that. wants to learn how to do this. And that if if anything at all, if anything ha if, if if my films and 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 the effort and uh, uh, sacrifices we as filmmakers have made on Not So Sane and Ponderous accomplish one thing. I hope that it's in, to inspire others to go out and do their projects and you know whether it's to start up their own YouTube channel or to just make yeah. little short films or to go out and try making a feature film and if they can look to us and say, hey, if those guys did it, I can do it, then, then, then it's all been worthwhile. And that's what my sort of hope is that people can look at us and say, hey, I can make my own feature film and go out and do that. Yeah, I love that. Were you able to do like a uh, premiere for Night Watchman? Did you get to get together, do a little red carpet or anything? Well, we 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 had it. We had a screening at our at the house. Um, um, we we wanted to, but we just really couldn't figure out how to do it with a with you know with a with a six episode right. series. Well, yeah, because uh, we, you couldn't, it, it'd be tough to show all six episodes. Yeah, yeah. We we have had other, you know, we, we usually do have screenings at at our other ones. We'll, we'll, we'll be at a local theater here in town and sort of have the red carpet and the big premiere. Yeah. But for the Night Watchman, we just couldn't figure out really how the logistics of that would work. Do you screen just one episode? Do you screen two episodes? You know, how does this work? What would we do? You know, how would you have the break? So we just kind of said, let's just have, let's just watch it the way it was supposed to be watched in a home, you know, on, on the screen. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I have a home theater and then we have a, the, the living room and all the cast and crew came over. We had a big party and, you know, it was funny because the, the, the home theater had uh, started like two minutes later than, than the <laughs> living room. So when the, 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 the living room had wrapped up, we could hear the reaction happening from home, the home theater. And it was everyone oh, was cool. giggling and laughing. Is all no, oh, how could you? Oh my God, what's what's going on next? 
from the other room. So we all got to enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's terrific. Well, so a couple of things, uh, Brett, before we uh, wrap up, is yep. there anything else that you're working on that we can keep an eye out for? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, uh, we, we've actually finished uh, a Western called The Oldest Posse, which is about uh, uh, some retired lawmen who uh, have to go out after one more outlaw. Sort of my love letter to the spaghetti westerns. The, yeah, I, I love that uh, idea of having the older cowboys. Yeah, uh, and then uh, and and we're kind of in the film festival circuit with that right now. We're we're going to be at a couple film festivals in in October at that uh, with that. And what we're working on right now is is our Siri Rabbit Seven, but that movie is actually just sort of a the, the the focus of the real project, which is a series about how to make a movie with no money. We wrote the book. So now we're doing this series that takes you from my, my first production meeting with where we sat down with the cast and crew and said, hey, we want it, we're gonna make a movie for under a thousand dollars and we wanna show people how to do it. What you know, and, and all the actors had their ideas and we decided what movie we're gonna do. And and I, we show how we write, how you know, how we how we schedule, how we plan and you know, cast. And then the shooting process of how we're able to shoot, you know, five scenes in one day. And that's the whole premise of this series so that we can show people, hey, this is how it's done. Because we, we, we saw the comment section from another YouTuber who had, who had said, who was trying to inspire people to go out and make their own movie. And the comments were just, well, I don't have the time to do this. Oh, there's no money for that. Oh, and it was just so many people making excuses for not going yeah. out and making the movie. I said, I've got to do something to show people, look, you can do it and document every aspect of, of, of the process. And so that's the project we're working on now. I love that. Yeah, I, good for you. That's that's terrific. Yeah, because I never would have thought of that. You wrote the book. I never would have thought about putting it in practice so you can actually show people. Yeah, and that's sort of the premise is, okay, we, we wrote the book. And you can you can say whatever you want in a book, but here we can back it up with the video and say, yeah. this is how we did it. We did it for under thousand dollars. Now you can too. Yeah, I I love that. I love that. So okay, so um, where can we find uh, you on social media? Uh, Instagram. Uh, well, you can find Not So Sane Entertainment on uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and, or I guess it's X now. And um, uh, I'm still having trouble with that too. I haven't. <laughs> I'm still calling it Twitter. So <laughs> I think it'll come back around eventually. Uh, but yeah, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is uh, not so sane ent e n t for entertainment. Nope. Um, we do have a YouTube uh, channel, uh, not so sane men. Um, it's uh, we we have a lot of our trailers, some little short films, and our own series where we talk about making movies with no money and the crazy stuff that's happened on our movie sets and what went wrong. That's the name of the little series is what went wrong. Um, and then uh, our website's not so sane dot com. And then uh, most of our latest films can be found on uh, Amazon as well as Tubi. And Tubi is great because you get to watch it for free. Yeah, Tubi is. It, Tubi's doing good work. I mean, you got a, you've got some commercials in there, but yeah. it's free. Yeah. Which, you know, for a lot of people, that's the only way they can watch stuff. Yeah. And and I would say, you know, and it's great because you don't have to really worry about, uh, uh, you know, some of our movies early on, you know, were, were pirated. And, we you know, we lost some revenue because they were on torrent yeah. sites. And because people want to watch a few for free. So it's, it's sort of a win-win because, you know, th that, that ad revenue really does help the independent filmmaker. Tubi is a terrific platform for that. You know, yeah. the audiences get to watch for free and, and the independent filmmakers do get to reap the benefits. So I, I, I highly recommend, you know, uh, that for both filmmakers and, and audiences, because you can find some great stuff on there uh on, on that platform ah, that's awesome yeah good good for you brett and this is this has been a blast you got to come back so we can oh, talk about the, you know the next stuff uh coming out because this, oh, this has to. been terrific i mean what I think would, you would think that some of these big budget studios would be looking at independent filmmakers as a way to save money because it's those people that they're used to operating on a budget if you give them some money they're going to be able to do some great things, but they'll probably be able to do it a little bit cheaper than if you just keep going back to the same people. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I think that is, that, it, that would actually be a great topic for a whole nother episode, but I will go into the, the, the say that I think the key of that is I don't know if they want to necessarily save that money. There, there are so many people yes. that, that, that 
make a living in 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 Hollywood and on those big production jobs that if you start that's true bringing a guy like me in there there's gonna be some people that are fired because we don't need them <laughs> so, you know before before I was a podcaster I uh, I ran call centers and it was always bad when the company would send in like the uh the people to to figure out if we needed to cut you know, staff or, or, or combined processes or something. Cause we all knew they're there to make cuts with yeah. that. Nobody wanted that. Yeah. Nobody wanted that. So it's kind of, I guess would be a similar situation. Maybe not. You're not going in there and saying, I'm going to cut jobs, yeah. but just by the process of how you do things, it's going to save money. So yeah, that may affect some people. Yeah. Well, when you're, when you're an independent filmmaker like me and you've got a, basically a, a crew of two, maybe three people, and you're putting out what we're putting out, which is not that, you know, it's not that much lower on the on the scale of what yeah. you'd see from a Hollywood film. Then you got to look at the, the the cat, you know, the, these Hollywood projects with tens of thousands of people. In it, and it's sort of like, whoa, well, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you bring a guy like me in and I'm going to be spending most of the time going, well, what does this guy do? <laughs> yeah. what, what are they doing? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's it, that stuff I think is it's, it's so interesting to look at. I love looking at a uh, create, I'm not super creative, but I love creative people and kind of seeing how their, their mind works and it can be different, you know, in different ways. But the part about what you do that I love is the storytelling's there. The writing's there. Everything else is just, it's nice, mm -hmm. but as long as you got a good story, you know, my imagination will fill in the gaps. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, I mean, that that's the way film was when it first started out. Right. All the way to the fifties. I mean, Hitchcock, you know, was, yeah. was infamous for that. You know, don't, you don't have to show them. Uh, alien, you know, you didn't see them, the alien for, you know, how long. Oh, no, and it didn't hurt the movie at all. Probably added. Exactly. Because it was the imagination. We yeah. were, you know, we as the filmmaker were just the guide for your imagination, your, you, you, the audience's imagination. We just kind of held your hand and let, you know, and said, this is what's coming up next. This is what this is. And we let your mind and your imagination do, do so much of the work. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Brett. And definitely, you know, reach out again to oh, me absolutely. when you're ready. We'll get you back on. Sounds great. Thank you very much. I had a great time. You, you're doing a great job here. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you to say. Okay. Hold on one second. All right, so that was Brett William Mauser. I hope you enjoyed that. I love the, his passion for his projects. I think that's commendable. Um, if you've never seen one of his films, go go watch some. They're really well done. He's he's a uh, terrific writer. His uh, his films are well done. The special effects uh, we probably made them sound worse than they are. They're not bad. They're real for the budget they have. They're actually really good but they don't distract from the story the story is good enough that it carries it really excited to check out uh, night watchman i enjoyed the trailer uh we're going to you know be watching that in the studio this weekend um if you're finding us for the first time and you enjoyed it and you'd like to support us we could use the help and we don't ask for any money so it's free you know, if you're watching our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod, we just ask that you hit subscribe. That helps us out. If you're uh, listening, wherever you listen to your podcast at, just subscribe there. That'll help us as well. We've also got a website, MeisterCon.com, where you can watch all 636 episodes and counting or listen to on the website. It'll also let you know if we're doing something in studio like watching Night Watchmen or if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, anything we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. So definitely check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. 
And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.